ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I'm Rick Bülow, this is Comics Has, and this is yet another student mentor one-on-one -on -one hour. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the student. He's new, he's young, but he has that fire to learn more, so he's here with us today. Welcome, Das Bonds. Welcome, man. Hi. So, Das, tell a little bit about your your art your your art experience. Um, well, I started drawing in seventh grade because I I had a friend who was an artist and I was interested in it, so I asked him about it, mm -hmm. and he start he like showed me how to draw. Like the first thing the first things he showed me how to draw were uh, eyes from Dragon Ball characters. And then, you know, just from from there, I just started to, like, learn more about art. I took uh, classes in my schools. Um, I'd, like, I took classes all throughout middle school. I've taken art one and art two in high school. And now I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to improve. Hopefully, I, 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 would, I would like to become a freelance artist in, at some point. But for that, I have to get pretty. I have to improve. So, oh yeah, for sure. Um, but you do the. You, I must say, you do seem mighty young. So I, I'll have to ask, how old are you? I'm sixteen. Sixteen. So you, you, you just started on the art journey, and now you're here. Hopefully, uh, the yeah. the mentor I brought you can help you. So to, to tell the viewers, uh, wh what's the subject of of today? We'd like to improve on my light and lighting and shadow, so I can just have like better show the form of characters in my art. That's very important and a really good subject to have. One of one that I personally love love to do. But I got I got something really special for you. I got one of the great ones in my humble opinion. He's he's new on the scene. You may know him for his uh, for honor uh, for honor commission uh, commission work, or his work at on uh, Podunk Comics Bourbon. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Marius Lane. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a minute. Last time you were here, you were here uh, uh, with the comic test on uh, Javels. Uh, let it out. Uh, yeah, I was. Podunk I was. Comics. Bobbin. We how, how, we discussed the uh, chapter two. Yeah, and how's uh, uh, what what you've been doing since then? I mean, it's only been a few months, but well, I, I've tried to, and I, I guess successfully, I've uh, set up some commissions uh, during that past time, and uh, I've been improving on my craft. I've been trying to increase my ability at rendering, at drawing different things that i'm not really comfortable with for one uh, architecture i've dabbled in that more a creature design a costume design and uh, pretty much uh, tried to make my clients happy because uh they they put their trust in me and they they of course they they would like to have something great made and so uh, that's what i've been trying to do over the past few months to create art for different people to create art for myself which sadly i'd like to do more of and haven't been able to do and uh, now I've, I'm currently working on chapter three of Borbane. And so hopefully in the next month or so, I get to finish that and then to release it to the public. So that's what's been going on on my end over the past few months since our last conversation uh, with Gerald. And uh, in case you're watching this, Gerald, what's up? <laughs> he's not watching my show. He, he, yeah, sadly, he is. He, he, he's not yeah, going to yeah. watch my show. So anyways... Uh, Marius, this is uh, Das Bons, uh, our student Hi, for this guys. week. Hi. So, as far as I know, uh, Marius, you gave uh, you gave Das before we started this some homework. Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, would you like to elaborate a li little on that, or should we just jump straight into it and it will come by for itself? Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's good for us to explain uh, the activity I asked Daz to do. Daz and I spoke uh, a while ago, and uh, I, he showed me some of his artworks. In fact, the the artwork that you're seeing right now is uh, is on the screen. 
This is one of his recent pieces uh, based on what he's told me. And so I decided to, to make use of this recent artwork as the study for this session so that we know exactly how to improve upon something. And so I sent him my redraw of this, of this artwork. This is Daz's artwork. And so for the purpose of study, I created a PSD file, which housed a redraw of that artwork right here. And so that PSD file has the, all of the clothing parts separated and all of the fill, fill areas ready for color. And so I sent him the file and asked him to, I asked him to relight the scene with the different lighting setups that I've created. So the first one that I sent him is uh, a top-down uh, sun, sunny day. And the second one is, is the one that emerges from the right side of the character. And then the other is from the left side of the character. And so that's the activity I asked him to do before this session. And uh, I'm very excited to see what he's been able to create. Yes, and before we go on, for the viewers at home, what he just showed you there, right there with the models, I believe, is from Das, uh, das 3D animated. Uh, oh, uh, Das 3D yeah. is, a per is, is not a free program. What I used here is Web App Magic Poser right here. Oh. Yeah, so oh. it's, uh, it's for free. You can access it online. Anybody can access it. And then you oh, can create nice. your own models and pose them uh accordingly so the, the, also for does if you're listening right now this is very helpful for whenever you work as it has helped me so many times because sometimes you can't find good photo reference sometimes you can't pose because uh, for one your house might be too cramped or you don't have proper lighting this is very essential in pushing your abilities a bit further and so again the website is web app magic poser that's the one that i used so and uh, when you when you have the when you have the time and especially want to, if you want to expand on your learning you could use this. And okay. with that and with that being said, let's see uh, let's see the uh, das you, you you mentioned that you didn't finish but you at least uh, ha had a good uh, good attempt on it. So let's jump to yours here. Right. Okay. So uh, this is of course the original without any lighting or shading so i there was three i had to at least try to finish and um this is the first one that i worked on this Ooh, one yeah this is the mm. one i spent most of the time on and this is the second one that i was working on cool uh, I was using the, I had, um, I do have a double monitor. I was using these references provided to me. Um, I was doing, dumb, uh, lit. the eighth one is the one that I did first. It was, yeah, it's the, this is the, the eighth one. And then the first one was the next one that I was working on as well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I didn't get to. I didn't finish in time. Okay. So, uh, the very first thing that I'd like to touch upon is the is the meaning of shading. Like, what, what does it mean? What What do we? How is it that we can perceive images with uh, with our eyes? Well the main catalyst for that is the existence of what I think everybody knows to be light. Light is, uh, I don't want to go into too much science terms, but it, it's what allows us to see things. If something does not have light, then it's just pretty much pitch black. And the relationship between light and the absence of light, which is shadow, is what allows us to see. That's pretty much it. For example, here, as uh, as the screen shows, you have a ball. It's quite perceivable as a ball. Why? Because there's form. With form, you're able to assess the edges, the values, and the entire form present in the object. And if with proper shading, you get to realize 
a 2D object into a 3D object based on this relationship of the light. And so that's, that is uh, how I think is best to describe the, the ability for us to see things. And, and from there, the question is, how do we convert what we see, or in, in this case, how do we convert Dawes' vision into an image which houses as accurate as possible lighting? Lighting, shading, and form and of course shadow. So that will be the, the, the subject that we'll be dealing with uh, today. All right, so the first thing that I'd like to touch upon are the components of, of shading and lighting. So as you can see in this graph right here, we of course need the light source. It's the, it's the source of the light and everything that it touches in a, in a sort of uh, wave type or particle type form is the objects that it, that it hits. So in this case, it comes from the top left corner and it hits the object and it creates the form. The form is created out of these parts, which is highlight, the area subjected to the light, uh, no, light, the area subjected to the light, highlight, the point, which can be more visible in other objects, for example, on this house right here. You can see the light, you can see the highlight. The highlight is pretty much the reflection of the light available. And after that, we have the halftone, the, when the light slowly diminishes according to the angle, according to the faces that are not concentrated, where the light is not concentrated. And then afterwards, we have something here where the light begins to almost disappear. This is what we actually call the terminator. The terminator. After that, we have the core shadow right here. It's just not indicated in the text, so don't find it in the text. Uh, this is the core shadow. After that, we have the ambient occlusion right here. We have the dark highlight, and then we have the cast shadow right here. So all everything we see is composed of these facets, of these factors. And that's that that's what allows us to see. And now the the question is how do we convert these principles and apply them to Daz's drawing? So that will be the conclusion of our discussion. So what I have here is uh I'll be demonstrating right away. Uh, how we could apply that. So here is a here is an image of a lady in a jacket uh, that I purposefully chose because uh, Daz's artwork has a lady in a jacket, and so I thought it would be proper to find images that we could use best as reference. So the first thing we have to do is to see things in black and white. I've pretty much trained myself to be able to do that, and so I could study this. Uh, by neglecting the colors and just taking the form, the shadows and the light. But with uh, this application that I'm using, it's called PureRef. It allows you to, uh, to compose uh, different resources and then put them together. By pressing Control, Alt and G, we could convert it into black and white right away. So as, as you can see here, we then can try to simulate that and the artwork that I'll be doing here. So the first thing that we do is to, of course, we're drawing. We're not, we're not just shading. The first thing we do is to get the, is the structure of the lady. Here is, uh, here's the structure that I did. As you can see, it goes back to the primitive shapes. We have pretty much a cone, uh, a cone for the woman right here, tube. We have a tube for her arms. We have we can have a circle for her head, and then extends into a cone again, and into a cylinder. I mean, cylinder. Then a cylinder over here. So it's pretty much just basic forms. So that's how this is built up. After that, we can then put in her silhouette, as defined by the photograph here. And then once we have that set, we should be able to fill it in with a very uh, neutral color, in which case is gray. 
And then from there, we assess where the light comes from and which parts of the object are facing away from the light. So in the case of this image, which I'll, uh, for the purposes of this, isolate here, so that we can see it better. Uh, where do you think Gaz the light is coming from? I'd like to ask you. Uh, I'd say like top right, maybe? Top right. Okay, that is correct. Top right. But if we, we were to treat the image a 3D, where is the light coming from in relation to the subject? Uh, behind her left shoulder. Up, behind up, her up, left up, shoulder. Up, up, behind. That is correct. That is correct. So what, what this is called is the principal light source. It's a term used by cinematographers. This is the main source of light that uh, we're able to recognize. But does if uh, if if you may humor me, where else do you think the light is coming from? Um, basing on the photograph that we we have here, where do you think the light is coming from? Uh, too. Oh, uh, the reflected light from the windows. Okay, or that's one. Inside the that's a factor. Inside the buildings, not not really. Uh, the source of the light is the sun. She's standing outside. And so the mm. sun is not, is not an object that just stands directly right behind her. Because of the size of the sun, it casts something called global illumination. It fills in the entire scene. So that's why we have light that actually touches on her face. Light that touches on her jacket, on her clothes, on her thighs right here, on her bag. Because if the light were solely to be from this area, from behind her, then her face would be obscured by shadow. There would be no light present right here. Such would be the case if we take one of the samples that I had sent you, right, right here. Where is the light coming from here? Behind her. Behind her, right? Same with the answer that you said for the, the girl in the jacket. But in this case, we don't have light. We don't have too much global illumination happening. That's why you have strong contrasts occurring right here. And that's why the brightest part of her body would be the rim edges of her form. Everything else is pretty much subject into shadow. So that is not the case when it comes to this picture. What we have here is we have light coming from the back and we also have light scattered and pretty much uh, sponging or surrounding her with light. That's, that's the case here. And so that's what we'll try to do with this. And uh, if you have a Photoshop open right now, you could try to follow through. Uh, you don't need to, to get this silhouette correct. You don't need to get the form right. Just try and flow with me because uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll try to do this as fast as we can. So after you've uh, created the, the form, the silhouette, for anybody who's watching this at home uh, uh, through YouTube or Facebook, try and follow through as well. Uh, create an, an outline, a silhouette. Try to get this reference pick as your reference or find something else. It's okay. But just get those principles in mind. First, the first thing is identify the light source. The principal light source in this image is coming from behind. Second, determine how strong the light is. Is there an enveloping source of light, such in this case the sun, or is it just a spotlight in which it just affects a certain aspect of the form? Those are the things that you need to consider. And so from there, let's try and uh, begin our, our, our shading, so to speak. So I've created here some startups, but we'll disregard that. We won't be using that so that we could uh, better define how we progress with things. So again, we go back to the terminologies that I've set up. So we have the light, we have the highlight. So what we have here right now as our, our, our base color is similar to the half tone. It's a neutral gray, it's a mid gray. And so what we can do now is to create the light, which goes up the scale or down the scale or the shadows which go down the scale. We can now create 
areas of light. So this is a top down coming completely from the top. That's uh, this is the light. And then we could produce the shadows, which go right under. So as you can see, I in just uh, a few strokes, I've created an entirely new light scheme for this picture. Because I've just adjusted the relationship of light to the form. And that's why we are perceiving a different light source right away. We're, we're perceiving a different uh, image right away because of those few changes. But that won't be the case. This is just an example. And we'll still try to imitate the reference picture uh, pictured here. Right. So let's do that again. This time for real. So first we identify the main light source, which we've already set is behind her. We do that by creating the rim light right here. So the, the hair absorbs some light that it doesn't reflect too much light unless it's clustered together. Like in this, in this case, there's still a, a, a lot of blacks available. We don't put too much light there. Maybe at the top here, because that is the area most subjected to light. Like that. We also put some light over her jacket here because it is flat, it's lying down, and it's uh, catching a lot of sunlight. We also put some light here on her arm because, again, similar to the collar, it's, uh, it's not standing vertical like her, so it's able to receive a generous amount of light. The same can be said for her, for her pants. Since she's moving forward, what we can do is observe that motion and then capture that position because it is also able to capture more light because it is not standing uh, perpendicularly to the floor. But we've already established the main areas of light. Now let's begin by shading, by applying the dark areas. We can approach this in several ways. Uh, it, it's quite dependent on the kind, on your process really. So there are no hardcore rules attached to this. Sometimes some artists prefer for strong contrast right away. This is quite notable uh, when it comes to mangakas or the inkers in comic books, or some would try to be more subtle about it, uh, which is the case for painters because they try to ease the colors in between each other. So for this case, I, I think I'd like to go the more the former way, which is uh, for strong contrast right away. So does uh, when I say that to try and follow along, it, it's not forcing you or anything. So if you think that you you would like to, go ahead. If you feel that you're more comfortable just watching me uh, perform the shading, it's fine too. Uh, the important thing is that you get to pick something up. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, we are, we are now going to apply the shadows. So for the sake of uh, readability, I'll try to provide some guidelines in a separate layer. So this is the origin of the light. This is the area of her that's receiving most of the light. This is the principal, principal light source. But then we also have an overcast of light, which pretty much rains down on her. And so there's light coming from the top. So does if I'm if I may ask you, what is, what are the darkest parts of her form? Uh uh her neck, like on the side of okay. on the side of her neck. Uh okay. the crevice in between her her right arm or her left arm. Okay. Uh the underside of her right arm or her that yeah, right arm. That is correct. That is correct. So, uh, what and, else do you think? Uh, uh, why do you think they're the darkest parts? Uh, because they're getting the least amount of light. Of okay, all that, of her. That is true. That is true. But here's an interesting question. Uh, tell me if uh, it's okay if you can't answer. But I, I'd like to see uh, your understanding so far. Uh, her neck is pretty much located next to her collar, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so they should be receiving an, e a, an equal amount of light so far. Why is it that her neck, even if it's located similar to this area, still as brighter than this section? Why do you think that is the case? I'm not sure. It's a tough question. You and I, you, you and I am not sure about that one. Okay, uh, it's okay. Is uh, it because there's a because the skin is more reflexive? Uh, reflective. Yes, that that's one answer. The second is that its neutral color or its base color is already lighter than the jacket because the jacket, if we bring back the colors here, is already dark. It's already shaded dark. But her face has a much brighter color on it. Mm -hmm. And so the light touches both objects equally. Of course, one will be darker right away. And so does keep that in mind when you're coloring your objects. That even though, uh, even though a single subject is receiving the same amount of light, uh, keep in mind that all those objects on that subject receive the light differently. Some are more reflective, such as the case of the jacket. Some are more absorbent, such as the case of the hair. Some are slightly reflective, such as the case of the face. And some are pretty much uh, just absorbing of the, the light and doesn't reflect anything too much, such as the case with the jeans right here. And so keep that in mind because, uh, again, don't, don't, uh, don't overwhelm yourself. I, I hope I'm not overwhelming you with the... With the with the uh, with the terminology, I'm just using th those terms to elaborate far better. But as much as possible, I'd like to keep the words simple. So in case I'm not doing that again, just just tell me, and I'll try to explain things far easier. Okay. All right. Again, with the, with my topic sentence earlier, uh, I, I did say that everything we see is just the relationship of objects with light. And so that really is the case, such as in this example, you have the roof reflecting the light differently, the man's skin differently, the, the walls differently, and such is the case uh, with a smaller subject, such as the, the woman here. So, uh, okay, let's try to finish this uh, quick uh, rendering. So going back here, we've already set the brightest parts. Now let's create a layer underneath for the darkest parts. So let's set the hair dark because it, it's already shaded dark and it's just absorbing little light. That's why you don't have to think about it too much. Next is the next section here, such as with Dodds' observation, which is correct. And then let's pretty much just fill it in. So as you can see, I'm just setting up the base colors right away. So since the 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 bag or the tote, that's a tote, right? I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not entirely fashionable. So <laughs> you have the 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 shirt here and the jacket, and so you you could pretty much just fill that in. So right, like like so. But the difficult thing with filling it up is that you end up not being able to see the form anymore. So you don't know how to work on things. So what we can do with that is go for hue saturation, increase the lightness, increase, wait, increase the lightness, like so. And then from there, apply more darks. So again, like Daz said, there should this area should be darker. The hair should be dark. Like here. So as you can see, the 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 silhouette is really forming up right away. Like right there. And for the bag, the lowest part, right here right here and a little bit right here. Then we don't want to make her look fat at all. And so we have to ease, ease out the, the shading there.
so that it looks quite blended. And then with, once that is set, let's try to add some more highlights to finish this off. Highlights are produced from the edges of the object, such as this uh, ruffle right here, the ruffle right here, and the ruffle right here. And so you just have to streak it through, thus creating the highlights. We don't have to be accurate since what we're just trying to do is capture the feel and the idea of the lighting. So she has something right there. There. And her face, since it is brighter. She sets up something real quick. Doesn't have to have a face. Just enough to convey the idea of a face. All right. And you can, and you can see up in the up in the right in the navigator you got the it's all, it all always just with the uh, with slight form you've done already you can all already see what is what is going to be, which is yes. basically what the use of light and shadow does to you as as you explained earlier on and now we see it in action. That is true. Yes. Because uh, what I observed from ar some artists and from myself too when I was much younger, I used to draw like this. I would uh, take my pen and then I'd start to sketch up an object. As I'm sketching up the object, which in this case will be an arm, as I'm sketching the object, all I could think about is adding all of the tiny details, just putting in let's say the veins over here, some scars, uh, and then the fingers right here. And that's all I could think about. I wasn't aiming for accuracy when it comes to the form. I actually forgot about the form while I was drawing. And so when it came to the shading, I would shade this piece like this, just on the outside. And I would be satisfied because I didn't know where the light source was coming from. All I knew is that the armpit should be dark, and then that's pretty much it. And so I, I applied this to more complicated subjects, and so I ended up with a very, let's say, uh, there's a part here with a back. And what I'd end up with is a very, very muddy artwork. something like so. So what we have to remember is that that is not how we approach uh, lighting. What we do is we take the idea of converting these into primitives, primitive shapes in our mind. For example, the cylinder, the cylinder, circle, cylinder, and then a circle here. And then from there, actually, oh, I painted on it. <laughs> okay, and from there, shade those things accordingly. That's what we have to do. Am I making sense so far? Yes. It makes completely sense to me. And the way you explain it makes it sound so like, I'm like, ugh, I knew that. Like, make, even, though, even, though it, even though I've heard it like a million times by a, a million different people, it yeah. makes sense in another way. I, I've, I'm learning, learning a little bit, a little uh, new things here and there with how you explain it. To to the viewers at home and to does uh, for you too. Uh, keep in mind that uh, what I'm saying is just a, a, a fraction of uh, what can be learned in art. And so, in case you learn something from this session later on, uh, that would be awesome. 
but then don't just take everything I said and consider it as absolute. Match it with some other artists, match it with some other professionals, match it with reality. Am I, is what I'm saying accurate? And then learn from that and then convert it into your own, make it your own, and then apply it to your artwork. That's what, that's what I can advise. From like the art classes I've taken in school, uh, yeah, I've I've learned like the like they've they've said all those they've they've like taught me how to shade like circles and cylinders and cones and stuff, but like I've I don't think they've ever like said anything about like things absorbing the light differently or or it bouncing off into certain things differently. Like so this is this is really um useful. What I'll be showing is uh, my rendition of Daz's artwork, which we saw earlier which we'll be showing again in a few few seconds. All right, so as you can recall from the start of the video, this is the artwork that Daz submitted to me. So I took my time to uh, re-sketch that uh, with uh, better proportions, I hope, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, a, a perspective that would help with the construction of the lighting, that we could study it uh, correctly. And so let me just uh, organize my windows. Guys, uh, this is, uh, you've seen this before. I've, I've sent this to you. And so this is how we began our, our artwork. Not that one. Not that one. Let's turn, the, let's turn off those layers. I should have turned them off earlier. Uh, let's see, let's see, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Just a few seconds. Okay, there we go. So here, this is what I sent you. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And so uh, I asked you to do three lighting schemes, and uh, these are the results that I came up with. This is the first one, which we can zoom in on here. And then this is the second one. And then this is the third one, which I was still working on. And so if you'll notice, they're colored, uh, each of them are colored quite differently because uh, the techniques that I applied uh, were, were different for each other. So the first that I tried to do, this is a single over paint. This is a single uh, coat of paint over the fill that I've sent you. So what I did here was assess the direction of the light, which in this case was coming from the right side. And then I provided the appropriate paints. And so the very same principles that I, that I uh, provided examples of during the, the, the lady in the jacket demonstration are the same ones that I applied here. As you can see, the paint is very rough. It's look at that. That that is so rough. But if you zoom out, it conveys the idea right away. You could pretty much see where the light is coming from. You could pretty much assess that uh, the lights, the lighting, is determined from the left to the right side of the character. So that is the first kind of lighting. Uh, that's the kind of that's the first kind of paint that I performed on it. The second, I tried, I tried, hopefully it was successful. I tried to do a more anime type of approach. For, for this one, I created, uh, I created first layers for the chair. And then second would be this secondary layer. But what color do you think that I apply to create these shadows? Uh, That's like just a, one color I, for all of it. A bluish green, maybe? That's, that's correct. That is correct. So uh, if you can see, it's actually colored blue. I think I can exhibit that far better by putting in a solid, solid color in between. There you go. So it's actually some sort of bluish gray. So this is the main color that I used right here. And then I set it to multiply. 
So this is one of the ways in which you could color something. Is uh, I'm, I'm, I'm personally not a fan of this method. This is not a method that I use. Uh, I've done it before, but just for experimental purposes. But uh, seeing your art style, which, uh, which I think stems from manga, would that be correct? Yes. M manga is very cool, trust me. I, I love manga. But when it comes to illustrating myself, I try to try to go the more classical route. But in this case, I wanted to be able to, to, to teach you, and that's why I set this up. And so what, what is important here is to understand the form of the character, to understand the form and how the shadow plays. So in this case, the light is coming from her right side. And as you can see in this sample, you have a cast shadow here. You have her face obscured by the light here. And then you have most of her abdominal area covered in shadow. And of course, it's just not visible, but her skirt also would be covered in shadow since it, since it flows downwards in between her legs. And so those are just the key terms that I kept in mind when, when creating this. And so that is one of the fastest ways to create shadow for your character by determining the form of the character and then applying the necessary form shadow or cast shadows on, on that said subject. And then apply that to the base colors you have and voila, this, is, this would be the immediate result. And so after that, what we can do next is provide the highlights, the highlight colors. And then after, what color do you think this is that I applied for highlight? Uh, it looks like a yellow. That is correct. Yes, it is some form of yellow uh, right here. See? Yes. Yep. So with that uh, over subject and with the shading in mind, you now notice how the object, how the subject is forming. Apologies for any noise. Those are my neighbors. <laughs> They're starting to wake up now. <laughs> so once we've set up the highlight, it doesn't have to be too strong. As you can see, the, the range of the color isn't too different. Look. Look at the color navigator on the right side. It would be too much. Because the idea of this is since this is a jacket, like let's go back to the girl, as you will notice, the jump between the colors on the jacket aren't too great. It only happens during the highlights right here. Highlights. But then everything else is almost dark gray all around. And so that is the idea you'd like to be able to illustrate with the first level of highlight that you'll be providing. So it doesn't have to change so much. Unlike with this white shirt, in which case the, the jumps and colors also aren't too great, but they're in the white section, that should be what happens here until we provide the highlight, main highlight which jumps a little more because since leather is reflective especially the, that kind of leather ja leather jacket you have to be able to reflect the light and of course the reflection of the light which uh, let's try to clean up a little bit more here um, what am I doing it's not working is it working no it's not working right here go you could play with it and push it a little bit further but you remember follow through with the form of the subject in which case here i provided this brightest part on this area because that is the highest area meeting the light and so that is what you need to remember like for example, I'm going to be putting a white dot over here. Where do you think I should put that white dot? 
Um, on the that's like the hand area. What? Okay, like the hand area. Actually, it should be right here. Because there is a certain puff. You're correct. It is the hand area. There's a certain puff that happens because that area is pushing forwards into the light. Do you see the difference it's making? Yes. There. So that is what you have to keep in mind when you're creating your own artworks. Figure out the form of the character. Figure out the reflectivity of the, the, uh, of the object. Figure out how much it absorbs light. And then afterwards, provide the brightest part with highlights with the area that touch, almost touches or is closest to the light source, which is the case for the shoulder here, which is the case for the rim here, which is the case for her forearm and the tip of her arms there. Okay. And then after that, uh, okay, that's <laughs> that's a different layer. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's how you create the lighting there. So those are the two types of lights we've already discussed. Now for the last version, this one went a little more according to how I really do things. So. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? All right. Do you still remember how I locked uh, the layers for you to color on? Yes. So when you lock a layer, uh, I hope you were able to notice. When you lock a layer and you paint in it. Uh, let me give me a few seconds. When you lock a layer and you paint in it. What happens is that your brush strokes will not go outside of that. That is a locked layer. And so it makes things easier for you to just brush through any highlight and to ensure that your paint job is very accurate to the outlines that you've set. So this is an unlocked up uh, nope this is an unlocked layer right here look at how it just traverses the different layers the, the locked layer is what i just showed you and how do you lock so, them okay that's that's a good point i almost forgot so this is how you lock a layer this this little button on the the first button in Photoshop, which says lock. Unlock, lock. So if we unlock that, this is for the steel and studs. Look at what happens. But if we lock that layer, I am painting on the same layer. Just applies to the studs. So that's how it works. So does uh, with everything that I've explained to you from the past examples for this one why do you think the lights are set up the shading is set up the way it is set well the uh, the light is since the light is coming from above then okay that would I mean the shadows would be on areas that are not being touched or aren't directly facing the light that, that or, that's true that's correct very nice. Go on, go on. From, or have the cast shadow from things that are facing the light. So like on the on the neck is like the cast shadow from the chin as well as um, that's that's like, that's very nice. Yes, you are hitting it. What else? Um, also the right shoulder, that's all the cast shadow from the head. Correct. Um, the cast, there's a cast, uh, the, the, there's a shadow under, on the, uh, what's, like the, um, 
would that be part of the collar? I don't know. The the on her on her like right side, the um the hair bit? No, like uh the the folded part of the jacket underneath that. Oh the, this is, part. Yeah. That's more of a form shadow. A form shadow uh, when is the shadow that appears within the sa same form. A cast shadow is a shadow that is placed on top of another form. So you were correct in saying that this is a cast shadow from the chin because the chin is far off from this area. In this case, it's actually, you're right, you're still right. It's a combination of cast and form shadow. So you have the, the collar over here casting a shadow here, and then the rest of the jacket just does its job by uh, darkening its areas according to the light source, which is the case here. So uh, I'm going to just add a little more tweaks here. Uh, what I'd like you to do, Daz, is actually this is an unfinished uh, rendition, as you will notice, with the change I've applied. Look at that. Uh, with, the, with the remaining minutes we have, try to assess how it is still incomplete and tell me what changes it still needs. Here is our reference light source and feel free to tell me uh, how to improve this drawing and I'll do my best to, to flow with you. Okay. Um, well, from the, the right side of her face, in the in the reference, there's a shadow there, but there's a, there's none on your rendition, so there's, okay. there's probably be a shadow on the right side of her face. Okay. Um, the, That's correct. Yes. Um, Go on. The, I'm not. I'm not sure if it's just your style, but like I can't. Is there any highlights in the hair that is facing the? There are no highlights in the hair. You're correct in saying that. You're correct. Okay. We'll, we'll put um, in the highlights. Yeah, art is one of the like is the longest passion I've had in my life that I've stuck with. Yeah. So, That's awesome, man. Yeah. So when it comes to painting the skin, you have to be careful. You don't want to make her end up looking like she has bruises. That's that's actually the easier thing when it comes to male faces. They can look like they're swollen, but it's fine. But when it comes to female faces, there's a certain tenderness that that is required that can be really tricky to to get right can get frustrating actually especially me i have a background in mostly uh male male faces so here are the highlights does so for the highlights uh in in any hair that i do i try to stroke them in um as though they're individual hair follicles, hair follicles, hair, hair strands. And so, of course, with every specular that you do, if, with every highlight that you do, you have to counter that with some form that goes slightly against it to maintain balance. Because, uh, like, if we look at these examples here, you have this the strand that meets the sun, and you have the strand that is against the sun. So you ha we have to be able to simulate that one way or another by adding streaks on those streaks again. So it creates this uh, more complex image. You don't have to uh, identify every single thing because I will send you this file and then you may study it according accordingly, like do as you please with it. And so I, I'd like to leave with you the materials so that you could improve. 
And then this is just the session is just to I'm, I'm actually really surprised with your responses. I'm very glad that you're following through best as you can. And that's awesome. And so you don't have to uh, say every single missing thing because no artwork is ever truly finished. And I think that's good. I think that's more than enough to convey how to render this with the three different lighting schemes that I asked us to do. So this is how it looked beforehand. And with uh, the things that Dawes said, uh, it's right here and it's much improved. And uh, I hope that you learned something from this Dawes. And with that, we finish another hour tutorial, another great hour, hour tutorial with, uh, with Marius. And before we go, Des, thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Really thank appreciated you. having you here. Uh, I'm really impressed about what you already know for such a young age and your ability to soak and take everything in and use it to your advantages just blew my mind. And I'm sure if you keep on with this passion, you, you, you can go as far as you want to. Did you, did you get as much out of this uh, as, as you hoped or even more? I, th I think I actually, I got a bit more because when I was like, as like, I, yeah. So when I was doing the, um, the, uh, the, the re relights, I was trying it, I was doing it in a different way than I normally would have colored it or like shaded it. And it, so I, yeah, I feel like I've, I've learned more than I thought I would from this. Yeah. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for coming to us. Marius, thank you for being here and teaching. And uh, thank for you people, for people watching. Where can they find you? Me, uh, they can find me uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Reddit, and on Facebook. So just uh, look for uh, R L E V E R I T E dot art. So R L E V E R I T dot art. Link in the description below, I think, or comment. <laughs> so I'll, I'm just around. So you can find me on the interlinks, interwebs, internets. Yeah, and remember, guys, if you're new, uh, if you're new to this, drop a like, subscribe, and uh, catch "Let It Out" with Yell. Always so much fun, especially when I'm the co-host. We got a lot of things coming. This is just the beginning for Comics Cast, so follow along. And with that said, stay creative, keep on creating, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>